So. Here we go. You looking at me to run this? Are uh-huh. you? <laughs> <laughs> so. You go. Hey there. Hey. I don't like these. I said you go. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Daily Devotions with Dad. And Mom. And Mom. Also known as Tammy. And Seth. And he's God and... We're not. We're not. We're not. Apparently I got thrown under the bus on Jeremiah's <laughs> episode. So we had to uh, <laughs> make sure I came in for a quick devotion with you guys and uh i'm glad i'm here today because i'm not dad yeah that's true that's very true that's true that's true yeah so for today's devotion we are basing this off of icr's days of phrase and this episode is titled the designed creation designed creation and it is uh based in psalms 94 8 and 9 would you like to read that for us today sure i'd be happy to Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? Psalm 94, verses 8 and 9. Very good. Thanks. I've been practicing. That's not fair. I haven't been practicing. I made that up. (laughs) Wait a minute. When have I had time to practice this? (laughs) I don't know. Okay. While you're at work. You're going to want me to edit this out later. <laughs> He's been reading ahead on tomorrow morning's I have devotion. Not. I do not read ahead on these. I don't. Good. Because that puts us on not even still a loving level playing field. I don't know what that means. Because, like, I am far... I am not your equal when it comes to this kind of stuff. So oh, if you've been please. reading ahead, then oh, that's of just not you fair. Are. So... It's just, oh, you know. No, no, so no, here no, we go. no. You don't get to get on here and badmouth <laughs> yourself. That is not cool. I don't these, aren't, any... these aren't very easy, though, all the time. I mean, sometimes they... they get kind of deep, which is why we're doing this, to admit that not everybody can just know exactly what they mean or exactly what God is trying to get us to hear, but that through talking with each other and talking out the verses, we can hopefully figure it out. And that's exactly right. And to say that you're not on a level with somebody else is to do yourself your own disservice. And yes. you're not, I mean, when you say that, you put it, you just say, well, see, I'm not, so I shouldn't have to or whatever. And that's just not cool. Okay. All right. So Dr. Morris says the conception of evolution, according to this verse, is nothing but brute like foolishness. It is if an automobile presupposes an automaker and a clock implies a clockmaker, surely the infinitely more intricate and complex eyes and ears of living creatures require an eye maker and an ear maker. In Proverbs 20, verse 12, we read, The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. There's nothing hard about that, right? Right. I mean,. The eye is a lot more complex machine than a clock. Understood. But I'm just still trying to make sense of the original verse that I read. Or you read. Okay. I mean, I read it, but it's like... Oh, I think, well, I think my guess is that he'll get into it a little bit more. But I think the point is that to see an ear, to understand that we can hear, to understand that we can see... And attribute that to a God who can't hear and can't see and can't, who doesn't exist is foolishness. Okay. It's foolishness to see the creation God has made and then attribute none of it to him. So this is, quote, attacking those who don't believe in a creator God. Yeah, bru- okay. ye brutish among the people and fools. When will you be wise? He that made the ear, shall he not hear? I mean, if 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 you have ears... There's an ear maker. That's the point Dr. Morris is making. Okay. And if there's an ear maker, then he can hear you because he's a real person. He's three real persons, but okay. does that make sense? A little bit. 
bunch and read some more. The most basic of all scientific laws, the law of cause and effect, no effect greater than its cause, becomes utmost nonsense if the cosmos is the product of chaos and the u- universe evolved by chance. The, f- the fool hath said it in his heart, there is no God, Psalm 14.1. For- hmm, I get really tongue-tied, so I apologize for that. You're doing great. Okay, so the most basic of all scientific laws is the law of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. That says if something happens, then something caused it. Yes. And no effect can be greater than its cause. That has to do with the law of entropy, the loss of energy. You know, some... you When you... I don't know if that's that's a good example that doesn't involve... When you rub sticks together to make fire, Mm -hmm. you are burning more energy than is being put into the sticks because of friction and stuff like that. So there's anything that is done is necessarily less than that which did it. Okay. (laughs) Less than that which did it. (laughs) That's okay. It's just okay. I'm not there today. No, it's okay. I mean, but does that make sense? I mean, I think so. So, if the universe had a cause, I mean, if the universe came into being, something caused it to come into being. Yes. And the thing that caused it to come into being must be greater than it. So God. See, this isn't hard. <laughs> but but I feel like when you make a comment like. In order for it to come into a being, something must have happened to cause it to come into being. And that's where people are going to say, yes, the Big Bang. Well, the Big Bang says that in the beginning, nothing exploded, which doesn't really answer anything. True. (laughs) Right. And actually, some of the current thought about the Big Bang is not so much that the Big Bang was a beginning, but that you have a bang and then a contraction and then a bang and then a contraction. Every creature from the single cell amoeba to the amazing human body bears the impress of intricate planning and construction. Yes, it does. The notion that such complex structures could evolve by random mutations and natural selection is simply a measure of the audacity of human rebellion. Uh, Goodness, Dr. Morris. Let me say that again. He's he was kind of feisty on this one. The notion that such complex structures structures could evolve from random mutations and natural selection is simply a measure of the audacity of human rebellion and the absurdity of humanistic reasoning. See, I was going to say, preach it, Tammy. That's awesome, right? That's, yeah, I mean, he's he, um, he had a way with words. Well, that's because humans... The I mean, audacity of the human audacity. rebellion. We love to be the best. We right? yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, I mean, we consider ourselves the pinnacle of, you know, the top of the food chain and all of this. And so if we're the top, then there can't be anything better. And so that's just Well, you've absurd. talked about that before of how, how small-minded we must be to think that because those who be, built the pyramids, it was so long ago, therefore they didn't have the mental acuity. You know, it, it's, it's not fair to say that just because it happened so long ago didn't mean they have didn't have the knowledge to be able to do it. I think they call that chronological snobbery. That's what it was. Yeah. That, you know, well, Noah could never have built a big boat like that because it was so long ago. They didn't know how to build boats. But then you look at the study of the temple and God gave them the directions. God told the people or the, the, yeah, the temple, the tabernacle, that he gave them what they needed and just random people. He infused isn't the right word but he provided them the knowledge and skill that the day before they never would have had yeah because god right so i'm going to put up a poll okay it it should be showing up now if you believe see it if you i mean so and i don't know how to phrase it basically this is this is to shame her okay thanks well (laughs) 21 well, years of marriage. because she came into and... this going, well, you're so much better, I don't know. But she's awesome. I mean, you're whipping out the tabernacle and the supernatural bestowal of gifts for the, so that the people could... Supernatural bestowal did not come out of my mouth. I can rewind the tape and it just did. 
I mean, it's not actually taped, and I couldn't rewind it. That would be weird, but you know what I mean. Anyway, <laughs> she's awesome. This, and this is the thing, okay? I'm telling you, if you care enough to be watching this video and you've watched this long, you know more than you think you do. Don't ever doubt yourself. These are intimidating to do. Yeah, but what did you just do? You took these pieces of things you probably hadn't thought about individually in years and years and years and you put it together. And that's what God helps us to do. And what the, his, that's why his word is so cool. Yeah. Anyway, so you were talking about the audacity of human rebellion and the absurdity of humanistic reasoning. I was. I, you were. It was crazy. It's phenomenal. Such things never happen in the real world. And there is no real scientific evidence, whatever, for vertical evolution from one kind to a higher kind. Now, we talked for a while. So when he says such things never happen, he's talking about the oh, notion sorry. that... No, no, no. It's just we took a break. Structures evolving from random mutations. mutations. Right. So, yeah. So the things popping into existence randomly and being useful. Like and there's that vertical event. evolution again. Right. Which is kind of like the snobbery all over again. Well, yeah. Kind of. We think, well, from the less complex to the more complex, because the farther back you go, the the simpler the things. But that's not what you see. The, the things at the bottom of the fossil record are, you know, horseshoe crabs or uh, things like that. They're, they're very complex creatures and organisms. Well, and you, you think about the fact that, you know, it's 2019. As things change and and what we have to work with changes and advances, we become um, adapted to being able to use those things. But you think back to our grandparents or even further back and the things that they had, they learned how to do. And we, we have so much because of what they taught us mm -hmm. that it doesn't mean we're better than anyone who came before us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. All right, so getting back to this, and we'll probably cut all that out. The we only, won't, actually. This is good. This is why people watch. Discussion is good. The only genuine evidence for evolution is the fact that the leaders of intellectualism believe it, and the only reason they believe it is their frantic desire to escape God. Professing themselves to be wise, yeah. they became fools. Romans, Romans 1, one twenty two. Yeah. Romans 1 is a rough chapter. It's, uh, yeah. But you know what? I mean, it's like we said before. We like to think we're great, and we let, not just that we're great, but that we're, that we're the greater. greatest, that we're the greatest. And if we're the greatest, then we're not responsible to anyone. But if we are not, if we are created in the image and likeness of God, then we owe Him everything. Yeah, and someday there will be an accounting. There will. There will. The ear did not evolve, it was planted. Okay, so what does he mean by planted? Well, that's what the verse said. I know, but what did that mean? He, he that planted the ear. What did that he, mean? That he, he that formed it? That's what it means, and gave it to us. He put it in the head. Okay. Uh, let's see, what's the word? Planted. The word is... Thank you to the icr.org Bible Nata app that we're using at the moment. See, I didn't know you could do this. So Seth is clicking on the words. We're obviously using the icr.org um, app for our Bible here. And going into the verse, it allows us to click on some of the words. And he's actually seeing through the lexicon um, some of the uh, different verbiage. Yeah. Which and the is word, very cool. So the word there for plant, you know, he planted the ear is to, to fix, fasten. to fasten, um, yeah. Attach. So, so he put it there. Yeah. It's basically, God put it there. God put it there. God put it what there. What do you know? What do you know? So the ear did not evolve. It was planted. The eye did not happen by chance. It was formed. Every wise man and woman will say with the psalmist, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that, that my soul knoweth right well. From Psalm 139, verse 14. It referenced Romans one twenty two earlier. That you know, going back to Romans one twenty, which is really what this is. Um, this devotion is all about the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. We can look at the things that are made and understand that there is a Maker, and we can understand something about Him. And that's kind of where he's going. If he's got ears, he, he can hear. He understands communication that way. He understands sight. You know, he gave us sight so that we could see. Not because 
there was a random mutation someplace that caused a weird nerve impulse to hit a brain. And I mean, it just, I mean, if you think about it like that, it really doesn't make any sense. Right. I mean, why would an optic nerve develop in a brain that can't process the signal? Yeah. But when we look at these things, we can see, we can hear, we can touch and hold hands, we can love one another. That tells us something about God. Mm -hmm. You know, and it says, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, and this is the kicker, so that they are without excuse. There are going to be a lot of people who go meet God one day and say, well, I didn't know. But and, yeah, you did. And God's going to say, you really did. I gave you more than enough. And yet you rejected it because you wanted to be me. That's why it's so important that we share God's word with our family and especially with our children. And for those of you who've been blessed with grandchildren to share with them as well so that yeah. it continues and God's word and um, your testimonies of his word in your life will continue to be shared throughout your family and throughout the friends and loved ones that you share life with. Yeah. Thank you, ICR, for letting us use today's Days of Praise. Thank you, ICR. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please go to icr.org. I'm sure Seth will post a link. I will post somewhere. a In fact, I've already done it. ta I mean, I haven't right now. But you will. But when you're watching this, I will have already done it. See? There it is. It's like magic. <laughs> Thanks I'm for glad. tuning in. I'm glad Jeremiah threw you under the bus. He did throw me under the bus. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Make uh, sure you click the bell icon. You heard her, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you click that. I, I mean... Do click it. And that way you'll get notified when we post. Like today, I was sitting at work and I went, got back to my desk. I was at a, at a short meeting and I opened up my email and there's a note that I had posted a video. And I'd totally forgotten that I had, no, because I had scheduled it to go at 11 o'clock this morning. And so I was like, oh my goodness, it posted already. Yeah. So even we get notified because we subscribe and you can subscribe too. So do that. Um, give us feedback. Tell, tell us what you like. Tell us what you hate. Um, I, Share life with us. Yeah. And we'll do the same for you like we've been doing. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Uh, for Tammy. And Seth. He's God. And we're not. And we'll see you later. Thanks. Mm -hmm.